Here we are, James, day three of the Democratic Convention. Uh, I, I actually spent, believe it or not, for an old guy, I spent about 45 minutes on the floor last night, then, uh, which I love to. I've done it at all the other 23 conventions I've gone to, and I, didn't, <laughs> I, didn't, I wasn't sure how it would go last night. I tell you what struck me. There was a sense of exuberance. I mean, it, it's just there was great inspiration in some of the earlier conventions. Mm -hmm. But those delegates, I think they realized that they, they dodged a bad one. And mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't overconfidence, but it was just feeling, you know, good. And one of them said, you know, we're even having fun. Yeah. No, I mean, it's a, the entire, and you know, I've been at Eric Nurse since 84. You predate me, obviously. But this is, uh, I, it might be just like Denver in, in, in 08, but it might be a little bit more because a month ago, everybody was completely down. Exactly. It was just flat. And I don't know if it's that we're feeling great because we're feeling great or we're feeling great because we're not feeling bad anymore. You know, it, it was an analogy I use, if you have a wisdom tooth and you, the dentist takes the damn thing out, you feel like you're on top of the world. I don't know if you'd have felt any better if you never had the infected wisdom tooth, right. but boy, do you feel good that it's exactly. gone. And I, I mean, I think the analogy is apt. We, we got rid of an inf infected wisdom tooth. Yeah. I, I spent some time talking to a guy from Georgia named David Worley. He's a former party chair, but in 1990, yeah. he came within less than 1% of defeating Newt Gingrich. And I said, what you could have spared us, <laughs> David, with just a few <laughs> a thousand more votes. But he said, a month ago, I was as depressed as I've ever been in politics. And he said, now I just feel great. Yeah. And I think that's the wisdom tooth. Uh, right. yeah. And uh, I, I must say, I thought the speeches were good last night. The Obama's always going to be good. And um, everything, you want to guard against hubris, and it's going to be a tough election. But I must say, based on the first two days, everything is going as well as could be expected. You, you know, let's, I want to talk a little bit about the Republicans, because there was this sense that they were kind of stale and it wasn't working. And we hope that, but you know, you don't know because of somebody. I'm beginning to lean more and more toward that position. Uh, Charlemagne the God, who is, the, he's the new whatever, yeah. he's black, but, but he's really, and I watched a piece and he had Trump, he don't want it anymore. And he showed a clip of him from Michigan. He's, he just doesn't have the fight in him. And the whole, Fox News, right-wing media, they're, they're, they're down to last night, Jesse Waters talking about birtherism. I mean, you can, get, you can be enraged at that, or you can say, is that all these fucking people got after all of this time? You re in in uh, uh, Elizabeth Hasselbeck was criticizing uh, Vice President Harris for eating Doritos. I'm not. I'm, I'm not I mean, making James, this. I mean, James, really, Doritos. Right. Birtherism <laughs> and Doritos. Wow. You don't huh? think that there's some, they don't? Man. They're just swinging in the dark, and I, I never want to say that. You know, Republican attack machine, and you know the Fox and the whole coordinated thing. But boy, right now they do look out of gas to me. Well, and J.D. Vance is—you know—normally you want a vice presidential running mate that compliments you. So J.D. Vance is taking the typical role of being the attack dog, and you know I don't know why Trump needs an attack dog, but in any event, he is the attack dog. Uh, yesterday, I guess he said that Tim Walls lied about how they had their baby because they, I, I'm not an expert, I've never had a baby, but that basically uh, he that had suggested he used in vitro fertilization, and they used another method. I mean, for God's sakes, what, uh, it, 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 first of all, the topic of, 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 of abortion or in vitro fertilization is one that J.D. Vance ought to stay, you know, miles away from. But they, I think that goes to their desperation, James. You know, uh, one of the things that we paid insufficient attention to is what's going on at Mar-a-Lago, all right? So we had Susie Wiles and uh, Chris La Savita, I guess, and it was kind of assumed that his actual campaign would be more professional than it was in, in 2016 or even 2020, that ADs were some operatives that had experience. And then you had uh, Don Jr. and Tucker, 
push for J.D. Vance, which blew up in their face. And then Trump, of course, still got Roger Stone there, so then he's bringing in Corey Lewandowski, uh, and other people are going down there. So we know that there's trouble in, in, there's trouble in Palm Beach. There's real trouble. There's, there's a real, real struggle for somebody to stay. There's a real sense of somebody wants to be ascendant. Uh, I don't see how, I don't see how both Wiles and La Civita make it. I, and, and if I had to guess, and this is only because they're paying, I think they pay La Civita more money, but uh, Trump's gonna be going crazy. He's paying all this money. He's getting crappy vice president. He has no attack, no punch left in him. And it, he better do something big. And I suspect he will. I, I suspect he's going to fire the whole lot of them, and they're all just plotting and scheming and trying to protect themselves. And it, it's, it, it's, I don't know, Shakespearean. Or it's, but what's going on down there is epic, and we're going to start to hear more and more about it because the, the, the internal fights are, are something to behold. And they're going to, and they have to deal every day with this man who is. He, he's just so goddamn mad right now he can't see straight. I mean, he thought he had a slam dunk and then they turned around. He doesn't know how to adapt to it. He, he, at his core, he's a racist, so he wants to, he's hit the race card as often as he can. People say, no, 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 don't do that. That's what he does. And then he brings in Corey Lewandowski. Corey peaked. His, his peak really was when he was a toll gate collector on the New Hampshire Turnpike. Uh, and uh, he, he really is, uh, uh, you know, a, a, he's not a third rater, he's a fourth or fifth rater, but he panders to Trump's uh, desires and Trump's uh, insecurities. And I, if I had to bet on a survivor there, I can't believe I'm saying this, James, I'd bet on Corey. I might. I mean, you know, I, 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 you know, I mean, Susie's, got, she's got very, uh, as I say in the kitchen, she's got nice skills. Uh, it's about, but I probably, I probably would. But because you, so you said something. Trump is mad, and you know he's frustrated. He's a lot of different things. I think the thing that Trump is more than anything else. I think he's scared. I think he is scared that of this sentencing coming up. Now they might put it off. I think he's scared of what he faces if he doesn't win. I'm saying this is not a guy that's going to lose an election. Going to he's going to lose, yeah, he's going to lose his freedom. Yeah. And, I, and when you lay all that on top, he doesn't sleep at night. And he had, so we go back and we talk about a month ago how depressed Democrats were. That's true. But remember, it was how exuberant Republicans were. They... Everybody was coming to them. Everybody was hiring Republican lobbyists. Everybody was coming in throwing money. Everybody wanted to have Don Jr. to be there. You know, everybody wanted to have this and that. And all of a sudden, the phone went dead. And there's nothing that there's no, it, 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 you can, when you compare the way you feel now to the way you felt 31 days ago, it's all the difference in the world. And it's not just how fall we've come up in terms of our morale but you know it started like this and it went like that and that's where the real big gap is and they sense that and they just can't believe what's happened to them they really can't well james i i asked some of our friends here today beforehand what do you remember other than trump and vance about the republican convention and the immediate answer was hulk hogan Oh, uh, no, the Band-Aid. I mean, that, I mean, but yeah. Hulk Hogan right. was the prime. The Democrats had Barack Obama, Michelle Obama, Bill and Hillary Clinton, Nancy Pelosi, and the Republicans had Hulk Hogan. But we had our version of Hulk Hogan, and that was the, uh, Sean Fain, the UAW president, when he yeah. pulled his shirt off and it had Trump as a scab under it. That was pretty good, man. That, that was that, funny, at least. It was funny, yeah. and that, that guy might be the best labor leader in the United States of this century. Well, they I mean, also didn't bring the Teamster president, who was at the Republican convention, but they had a whole, they had dozens of Teamsters who were, I mean, it was one guy there from Milwaukee who talked about how the, you know, the Great American Rescue Plan, whatever his title was, saved his pension. It literally did. 
Uh, so, I mean, nobody heard it because it was 5 o'clock yeah. in the afternoon, but still. So the Teamsters president that spoke at a Republican convention is a giant fool. I, I mean, when you think of Teamsters, you don't think of fools. This guy's a fool. Anybody that touches anything about Donald Trump turns to shit. So he goes and he talks to him because some of his members, and then Trump gets at Elon Musk and starts congratulating him for busting up strikers and busting up people trying to organize a union, and now he's all embarrassed. Well, you dumb son of a bitch, when you, when you went there and you decided to touch Trump, you turned to shit. And that's where you are. You can't control your membership anymore. You can't control your union anymore. You would, if you had any kind of courage, you'd fall on your sword and resign. Well, James, don't forget, if you're looking for a steadying influence in Mar-a-Lago, you have Roger Stone. Of course. Uh, I mean, Roger Stone, I remember uh, <laughs> when they named uh, uh, Paul Manafort the campaign chairman, uh, you know, who later to go to the slammer, I, I called Haley Barber and I said, don't you think that, uh, you know, there's a little bit of an ethical problem with, with uh, Paul Manafort? And Haley said... He said, Albert, when, uh, when, when, the, when the bar is Roger Stone, ethical standards are quite relative, and I think Paul Manafort can probably pass the Roger Stone ethical yeah. test. Well, the Roger to Stone the only got out of the slammer because he was pardoned by him. Right. It's a call a race to the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> we go going beyond the bottom. But All right. You're okay, ready. we're going to be back. We're going to have some great guests today. And uh, we're going to be following this convention for the next two days. And uh, it, is, it is interesting. And it's energetic. And you know what, James? It's fun. Too. Is it? Go Chicago. I've, whenever the right tells you this is a, a hellhole, shithole place, that you can't move around, there's garbage in the street, there's homeless, and you might get shot, and you walk down the street, and everybody's nice, it's kind of pretty clean. I, I, I walked around the neighborhood where the convention was. Of course, I got lost. Hey, you, you tell me where this is? Oh, yeah. It's up, you you didn't have Sam with you? But, no, but, but, you can't but, go but, out without but, Sam. Yeah, but, but, but maybe it was Sam and I will, will all screw it. But, but the point is, what a great city. What a great place. If, if the right wing tells you don't go somewhere, go to that place. Well, I'll tell going. you the other thing is, boy, I've spent a bunch of time just walking around down there and, and seeing the cops couldn't be nicer. No. They're, they're talkative. They're friendly. Chicago cops. Right. You think of 1968. They just couldn't be friendlier. And I'm, in part, it was because the protest did not end, end badly the way some feared. I but, think that, yeah. you know, I, you know I, I, I think that... Some, I would say that some protesters have a point, but the, the, the logic was they were asked, why are you demonstrating against the Democrats and not the Republicans when the Republicans have a, a much less favorable view of your position than the Democrats? And the right. answer was, we can't affect the Republicans. So we're going to march against the people that are going to treat us better than other people because we can't affect the other people. I mean, excuse me, but I don't get that logic. All right, into the rum walked the great Danny Meyer right here, so you get your Shake Shack burger and, <laughs> and go at it. All right, let's get Where's the out. food? <laughs> <laughs> all right, terrific. We're going to be back all week, so thanks for listening. <laughs>